All right, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about accrued revenues and accrued expenses. Now the word accrued basically means that uh, we're incurring it, but we haven't paid for it yet. So kind of like the last lesson where we got paid beforehand, when we talk about the accrued revenues and expenses, the cash is gonna come at the end of uh, the service being provided or we're providing the service or we're receiving the service depending on what we're talking about here on the accrued revenues and expense uh, lesson here. So let's jump right into accrued revenues and accrued expenses. So let's start with the definition of the accrued revenue. The accrued revenue occurs when the revenue is earned before the payment occurs. So accrued revenue, we've earned the revenue before the payment happens. So again, pretend you're the company and you provide a service, let's say lawn care service, and you bill the client once a month at the end of the month for all the services you rendered during the month. So you just do the service over the month, and then at the end of the month, you start to bill them, which means you won't get paid for that month's work until maybe the middle of next month. So accrued revenues, we're just gonna provide the revenues but we won't get paid until sometime in the future. This happens a lot with companies because business to business uh, transactions typically are done on, on account, meaning that uh, they exchange the products or services um, and then they bill them once a month because they have credit within uh, the company that's providing them the service. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but a company like Pepsi Cola and Walmart, Pepsi's just gonna deliver the goods to Walmart, Walmart's gonna accept the goods, start selling them, and then at the end of the month, Pepsi will then bill Walmart for those goods. So Pepsi trusts that Walmart will pay their bill when the bill time comes comes due, okay? Accrued expenses here occurs when an expense, uh, an accrued expense occurs when an expense is incurred before the payment occurs. So accrued expenses is a situation where you're actually incurring the expense, but you haven't paid for it yet. So again, pretend you're the company and you uh, are using electricity. So a lot of times electric companies will allow you to use the electricity and at the end of the month, they will bill you for the electricity that you use. That's what an accrued expense. I'm incurring the expense now because the electricity is on, but I'm not paying for it yet. I'll pay for it when I get the bill later on. When I get the bill later on, then I'll pay it, but the expense happened. When did it happen? It happened in the period in which I use the electricity. So the period that I use electricity, that's when the expense happens, not when I get the bill later on and I pay it later on. So a lot of companies will estimate what their electricity bill is because they don't really know. Um, and then they'll book that using the accrued expense transaction method, all right? So that is the definition of accrued revenues and accrued expenses. Under both situations, the cash happens after the actual revenue or expense incurring. So this is opposite of what we learned in the last lesson. Now again, same thing like the last lesson, under an accrued situation, there are generally two transactions that occur. The first transaction is the recognition of the revenue or the expense. And the second transaction that will happen afterwards would be the cash transaction, okay? So the revenue and expense transaction can, revenue and expense can happen first, and then the payment can happen later on. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of these in depth here. Uh, an accrued revenue occurs when revenue is earned before the payment occurs. So I've earned the revenue, I just haven't get, gotten paid yet. So when services and goods are provided to a customer, then we will debit an accounts receivable because we expect to be paid, but we're not being paid in cash. So we're gonna debit a, uh, accounts receivable, and then we're going to credit sales and service revenue, okay? So if we provide the service, we can go ahead and debit accounts receivable, and then we're gonna credit the sales revenue. Now, later on when we do get paid, we need to reduce the sales revenue, uh, sorry, we do need to reduce the accounts receivable because the customer is no longer owing it to us, and then we're gonna receive the cash. So we're gonna reverse the AR, and then we're gonna 
receive the actual cash. So we're releasing them of their obligation to pay us. So to do that, we'll debit cash because we're gonna receive cash, increases in cash, our debit accounts. And then uh, credit the accounts receivable because when we establish the debt of our customers, we increased AR. To eliminate the debt of our customers, we'll go, we're gonna do the opposite, which is credit AR. So that's what that looks like there, okay? So let's go through an example here just to make sure that you have this, uh, you are understanding this. So Walmart, uh, sorry, Walnut Creek venue also has 50 acres of orange groves. It is the end of the orange harvesting season and Walnut Creek sells 5,000 pounds of oranges to Baldwin Superstores for $2,500 on April 1st. Walnut Creek delivered the oranges to Baldwin facilities and issued an invoice for payment in the next 30 days. On April 25th, Walnut Creek uh, received a check for $2,000 from Baldwin Superstores for the sale of the oranges. So uh, Walnut Creek delivers the oranges. So when they deliver the oranges, the performance obligation is completed. When it's completed, they have earned the revenue. They're not gonna receive the cash at delivery. So therefore, they still need to book the revenue, but then they can't receive the cash yet. They're going to book an accounts receivable. So when we provide the goods or services, we're gonna debit accounts receivable because we're owed that and the amount that we're owed is $2,500 and how do we get that we get that through sales revenue for $2,500 okay time goes on and then we receive a check we receive a check for $2,000 so we know that that is received as cash so we'll debit cash Cash is an asset, the asset increases, increases an asset is a debit. And then uh, does the customer owe us 2,500 bucks anymore? No, they owe us $500. Well, it shows that the accounts receivable is up $2,500. How do we get it lower to $500? We're gonna get it lower by crediting the account, accounts receivable for $2,000. Now, just like accounts payable, I'll use accounts receivable, A slash R, it's just a shorthand for accounts receivable. You'll see a lot of accountants do that. Um, so just wanted to introduce you to that. So credit accounts receivable for $2,000. Now, how much is accounts receivable right now? Well, we had 2,500 as a debit. We have 2,000 as a credit. Uh, bigger minus smaller, so 2,500 minus 2,000 is 500. 500 goes on the bigger side, so we still have a debit of $500, which means the customer still owes us $500, and the, the, they may pay us later on, okay? So that's what that accrued revenue would look like from an example standpoint. All right, let's talk about accrued expenses. An accrued expense occurs when an expense is incurred before the payment occurs. So we basically are uh, incurring the expense, but we haven't paid for it yet. So when we do this, we're gonna debit the actual expense and we are gonna credit the accounts payable. Why? Because we're gonna owe it at some point. So if we used $1,000 of electricity, we would debit this as utilities expense for $1,000 and credit accounts payable for $1,000 as well. Now, Moving on forward, now we pay the bill. Once we pay it, we need to reverse how much we owe that vendor. At the same time, we have to remove the cash from our bank account. To do that, first of all, we've got to decrease the accounts payable because we increased the accounts payable uh, because we owed it. To decrease it, we'll do the opposite. The opposite would be a debit, so we'll debit accounts payable for uh, whatever amount that might be. And then we're going to credit cash for that same amount. So that's the kind of the template for the journal entries for the accrued expenses. So let's go ahead and get started with an example of an accrued expense. So Walnut Creek incurs $1,200 in utilities expense. The bill arrives today, but the payment doesn't occur for 30 days. So uh, we need to book the expense because we've actually incurred it. So to do that, we've got $1,200 here. It's because of utilities. So the best account that we can use is utilities expense. Increases in expenses are a debit. So we're gonna debit utilities expense for $1,200 and we're going to credit, not cash because we are not paying in cash yet, or so we're gonna use accounts 
payable for $1,200, okay? Time goes on, and as time goes on, uh, we pay our $1,200. So to do that, we're going to need cash. So we're gonna have a decrease in cash. A decrease in cash is going to be a credit. So we'll credit cash for 1200 bucks. And then we're also released of our obligation to owe the utility company 1200 bucks. Currently right now, we're saying that we owe 1200 bucks using the accounts payable. So because that was a credit there to reverse it, we need to debit it. So we're gonna debit accounts payable. In this case, $1,200, and then that will wrap it all up there. So in this lesson, we talked about the accrued, the accrued expenses, the accrued revenues, and remember that the accrued occurs because the revenue and expense happens now, but the payment doesn't happen later. A lot of transactions in the income statement uh, side of the house are like this because businesses will incur the revenue but not get paid from their customers until 30 days later or they incur their expenses now knowing that they'll have to pay them later on. And it just happens because in business to business transactions oftentimes, it is done on an on account basis, meaning that we are going to extend grace to our customer and tell them to pay us in 30 days. We don't want payment when you we deliver our product or provide our service. That's very different between a business and a consumer transaction. With a business and consumer transaction, typically in order for you and me to buy something we don't have terms we actually have to buy it on the spot now some people would argue that credit cards is buying on terms sure but the bank is basically floating us money for the uh, credit card charge so the store gets their money the next day or two days later they don't wait for us to pay our credit card and then our credit card company will pay our uh the store they actually pay it right away and then now it's just me and the credit card company that are dealing with the finances or what's left of it at the end of the day so that's what we're doing with the accrued revenue and expenses we showed you all of the journal entries that could happen but remember that the expense or revenue happens today and the payment doesn't occur until later on. So we have another entry that we're gonna have to do for that. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.